Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Demi here, AKA Thoughtful Dots. And I am so excited to bring you guys a special tutorial today. We have a good friend of mine who is also a dot mandala artist. Her name is Ranu, also known as Mandala Doc on Instagram. And she is going to be teaching a gradient sacred geometry stone class today. So I've seen Ranu paint this design in all different colors and it's just a really great tutorial to have on hand. So I'm really excited. Before we dive into the tutorial, I just wanted to let you know if you guys watch this video and you enjoy Ranu and like her teaching style, I wanted to let you guys know about a course that she just launched, which is Textile 101. So in this class, she is teaching you everything that you need to know about painting on textiles. I've seen her paint on totes and I've seen her do these little cute makeup bags. So yes, just tools, supplies, um, everything that you would need to know to paint on textiles, she'll be going over in that course. And she has so graciously offered my YouTube subscribers 20% off of her course. So I will be sure to link that in the description of the video. And that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Hello, my name is Ranu Sabnis. I'm a mandala artist from California. I'm also a full-time obstetrician and gynecologist and a mom of three. I started mandala painting a few years ago after my sister gifted me a dot painting kit. When I was scouring Instagram to find inspiration on how to start using it, I found Demi's Instagram page and her videos and they've been infinitely helpful to get started. Demi has been such a great artist and teacher and inspiration, uh, so this is a real honor for me to teach this mini course on her YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make something very similar to this meditation stone. It's a hand cast stone and it's got a transition from yellow to green to blue. I recently polled on my Instagram to see what color we should try and I think the overwhelming response was to try a green to blue to purple transition here. So that's what we're gonna mix up today. We're gonna start with uh, mixing the gradient and I'll um, go over what you need to do for that. And then we'll go over how to actually, um, how I actually paint the different um, circles on this to get something very similar to this, but in the colors here. So let's dive into the tools and supplies. So for the palette mixing part of the tutorial, I'm going to use two to three colors of paint for the main transition. Um, so for this, I kind of went with a teal to blue, but I'm gonna try to do more of a green. So I'm gonna start with green tree for the green. We're gonna use crisp blue for the blue and purple pizzazz for the purple and we'll see how that goes. I may need to add white or gray to either mute colors or brighten colors, um, depending on how it's going. I also sometimes will add some in-between colors from my palette to um, make the gradient a little smoother. I do use Deco Art Americana brand colors. I just feel more comfortable because I use that most of the time, but they do have hex codes on their website about for each of the colors. So you can find something similar um, with whatever brand that you feel comfortable with. All right, so next you need some empty paint pots. So for um, the stone that I am gonna do, this one actually has 13 colors, um, 14, I guess, including the gold. So I'm gonna mix that many colors. Uh, so I'll need three of these because these each have six. You can definitely use individual. Some artists will just use a paint palette and you know mix the colors as they go, which is fine. I'm not gonna show you that way today because that's not what I normally do. I like to save my palettes because I'll put them on everything. So I'll do a stone, I will put it on little keychains. Um, I did a set of earrings and my favorite that I've done recently was to put them on little 
California's. <laughs> so you can reuse this palette. Um, it does dry out after a little bit, but um, for me, I was able to do multiple um, projects with the same palette. So once you mix it, you can use it over and over again. So I like to take the time to mix it into the palettes. Next, I like to use these stirring sticks um, to mix my paint. I've got a small one and a large one. Um, the large one I use for bigger um, volumes. The small one is perfect for the little paint pots. And then for the sacred geometry portion of the tutorial, here I used a hand cast stone. So here is how it comes like this. It's got, if you can't really see it, but there's a center dot right here. Um, so you know exactly where the center is. I do paint it black. So here's my black stone. I use uh, folk art multi-surface paint to paint this black and let it completely dry. Um, I like the multi-surface because it's really easy to wipe off any mistakes that happen. So if you don't have um, a stone, you can definitely use um, just a rock. So these are um, these are just stones that I found that are irregularly shaped. This is a really small one. Um, so you can use that. I um, also will use cardstock to practice. Um, I've done it on um, ornaments. You can use it pretty much on anything. And then you don't have to do the sacred geometry pattern. You can use, so I use this palette to um, make kind of a gradient like in and out here. Here I use my really big um, gradient to go from yellow to green to blue to purple. Um, so you can use it in all of your patterns. I really like it. Um, for the dotting tools specifically, I do use these um, guys. I actually have two here. So I use these for the small dots. I actually don't go too far with these dotting tools. Um, and then I like the Happy Dotting Company um, tools because they have the sizes listed here, which I find helpful. Um, if you don't have the Happy Dotting Company tools, a lot of the dot art kits come with rods and you can definitely use them. I would recommend just practicing a little bit on cardstock or something like that, just so you get a feel for the size, kind of line them up in size order and then go from smallest to largest uh, so you know what size to expect. Um, and then I do, like I said, use a metallic paint for um, the center dot and then to do all these little micro dots, which I feel really kind of bring the piece um, to completion. But you can opt out of that if they're annoying. I know lots of people don't like these micro dots because they're very tedious. And at the very end, we'll glaze it with a varnish and then you'll be all done. Um, so I'm gonna um, change and move to my art desk to start the palette mixing. Okay, so here we are at my art desk. I have our example stone here. And then I think I'm gonna try something a little bit different than um, what I've done before. So I picked more vibrant shades of green, blue, and purple. So, so I've got festive green, blue raspberry, and purple iris. So if you look at them together, they're kind of more bright versions of each of these colors. I know the purple iris doesn't usually show up so well in black, but I think it'll help transition these two pretty well. So we're going to try it and see. I do want to start a little lighter than this. So I have my white here to start lighter. Okay, so first I'm going to start, so I'm going to put some festive green in here and I think I'm doing about half and half white 
and festive green. And I like to go light to dark. I may even add a touch more white so we have room to go. Okay. Try to make sure it's mixed, otherwise your dots will look a little swirly, especially at the end when the dots are bigger. Okay, so next we're going to put more festive green. And then here I'll do the same about half and half. White. Okay, I think I could use just a touch more green. Okay, so we'll put more festive green. Looks like this can be a little more green still. We'll come back. And then so we'll put this green. And then we'll start with. A little bit blue raspberry. Actually, I'm put a little more green in there. And I'm using a fresh palette, which I usually will actually spend the time and clean them, but I thought for this video, I could. similar. Some pretty teal shades. I sometimes will bring it right next to it so we can see. Okay. I'm thinking I need 13 shades, so that's 12, 13. So I'm going to start bringing in that purple soon. This purple is very concentrated. And I want more, so it's really hard to remix the exact same shade. So I do want a little bit more paint because you'll do bigger dots on the outside. And so your later colors, you should make sure you mix enough here. Go 
Yes. Okay, I just want more of this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more of each color. So this is bluish violet. On here, I'm just gonna put it like that. One here is going to be 13, which will be mostly purple, tiny bit of blue, and then just because I know it's a little hard to see, drop of white. Let's see, these don't look different enough. So what I might do is add just a drop of white. Okay, now it looks a little different. These definitely are different. These look good. Sure, I think maybe a little more of the purple just to darken it slightly. Okay. Okay, there's 13 colors. So we've got our palette here, and we made it from four colors. So put these back. My favorite part. Favorite part is closing them. Okay, so there we have it our palette from light green to blues to purple. And then I will pick a shade of metallic. So I think I'm going to go for. A brighter gold just because these are more vibrant colors and I usually use so let's see I've got this Emperor's gold it's a little brighter than the Venetian gold and I've got splendid gold I think this emperor's gold kind of looks cool. Let's see, let's do it. So it does look a little orangey. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of splendid. See if I can get a mix in between. Good, kind of like that. Okay, here we go. It's our fourteenth color, and when I'm doing um, smaller stones. What's nice about these bigger palettes is that I know it's only going to take like seven colors. I can start here and go. I can go backwards. Um, you know, I can start anywhere in the middle um, and get a different look to the stone, which is nice. Okay. So there we go. Now we'll get started on the rock. And so if your hands don't look like this after palette mixing, I'm not sure what you're doing because <laughs> mine always looks like this. Okay. 
Okay, and now we're ready to get started on the stone. I don't draw guidelines, so I already know where the middle is because there's that little bump there. Um, so I choose not to. Um, I usually love guidelines for most things. I think for this, I like the eyeball symmetry of it. I think it helps and sometimes I'm always tweaking it to try to get it to fit in between the previous dots. So I don't start with it, but feel free to start with guidelines if that makes you feel more secure. Okay, and I'm going to start, so I was just looking to try to remember what size I think. This one of these. Maybe we'll try the 11.5. We'll see where that gets us. So I dip 11.5, lots of paint. This is my Emperor Gold Splendid Gold mix. And then I'm going to dot right in the center. tool and then I like to kind of swirl it to flatten out that dot. I also like the way the swirl looks. Okay. And then My smallest tool and we're going to use the lightest green. So this is my micro dotting tool I've linked in the PDF. So I'll make one dot and then I just eyeball it. In between and for me the guidelines for this part kind of trip me up a little bit and then I feel like I have to go right on the guidelines even if it doesn't feel quite centered so that's eight dots and then I think I can fit three so sometimes with some that's I can only fit two in here, but I think I can get three. So I'm gonna try here. So that'll give me 32 dots around. Just go middle. And then in the middle of those two. We'll keep going around. Nice. Okay, last three dots. And once you get this down, Kind of just following your own. Okay, so none of the dots are touching. They're all around. This. Okay, so now for me, I have this set that I got from Michaels, and this little tip is usually the next size, and then I probably will move to this next. I think this is going to be too big for this. Okay, so next green. This is number two. Okay. So now the goal is to get the dot 
right in between the previous two. And then I like to skip a dot and then go back. So I can try space this out evenly. And I'm looking the previous one, like I see that dot was a little small, so I'm going to go a little bit to this side so I can fill it. Last one. That looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my Happy Dotting Company number one. We'll move to the number three. And again, we're going in between. I like to skip and go back, skip and go back. Okay. And again, you're going, skipping one and going in between. And I'm constantly gauging the space in the previous row because it's not perfect. It will look perfect at the end, but so I can see these are a little closer than these. So I just want to make up space or make my dots slightly smaller or slightly to the left or right, depending on what I see in my previous row. Last dot. Okay. All right. Now we'll go to the next color. Okay, we're going to use size two. We'll see. Okay, and again, last one, and then I... Okay, now with my 
two and a half. This is the layer we start to see a little more blue. Try the three. Hmm. Okay, so I'm on my seventh color and we're on the number three tool. This one's very dirty. <laughs> to clean my tools. That was getting a little close, so I just end up pressing a little lighter with the tool if I need a slightly smaller dot in a space. Okay, so now we're getting into that bluey green. transition was not so subtle there. Let's see. Okay. And mix the four next. And sometimes I'll jump sizes. I think we're okay so far. When we get towards the end, I don't want too much space in between the dots and sometimes when you go right in order, that's a little bit more than I wanted, but it's okay. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to use 4.5 or 5. Mm, 
So, let me see. I'll try the 4.5. We'll see. Yeah, that works. Again, try five. Let's see. That works. We're getting to see more air bubbles because it's bigger dots. It's pretty. Okay. Alright. Here's where turntable can start to be helpful because the edges are wet. And we're gonna go more from this side. I'm on this 12th color. And I'm using the 5.5. We'll see. That's what I want. I want the 6. Uh, it's kind of a little bit far. I'm going to try to do is add a little more paint. And then you'll notice the paint is kind of dripping a little bit. So I like to pick it up with a smaller tool and just kind of bring it up so it encourages it to dry more flat. So this row is going to take a little bit extra time. Okay. All right, row is done. So that is 12 rows. Okay, so our stone is dry and finished. We have the dark purple dots here. And we're gonna do the last part, which is putting on the micro dots. So I use my tiny micro dot tool. There's another one can use either either one but you want the smallest one and then I usually 
since I've done a bunch of these. Now, let's see my gold it needs to be stirred just a little. start at the fourth row and that's I'm gonna paint fourth row one two three four five six seven eight and you can barely see them on that inner row but you know you'll see the shine so again one two three four five six seven eight Okay, we'll just go all the way around. Okay. And then I think I might go up a tool size. And I'm going to try to see if I can do a double. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we finished that row. I'm going to try to do the same thing with the next size. So go kind of two. We'll see. And I can kind of see it gives it a totally different look with the micro dots that I like. Each dot has six of these gold dots around it, which is kind of makes it feel even more geometric. And I think it hides any imperfections. So this space is a little bigger, this is a little smaller, but with the gold dots, can't tell quite as much. So let me finish this row. Okay, back to the last two. And just be careful. I almost put my finger in these dots here. Okay, so now we're coming up on the curve, which is always a little harder. So I think still this same tool we'll get. Okay, we're almost ready to meet here. And I'm using this tool from Michael's but really you can use whatever tool you have as the smallest. I'm just used to this one. Okay, I'm gonna switch my camera I'm using this pot that a friend made. And I scared some dots. So I'm going to use the large end of the pink tool and we're going to go, this will help this dark purple stand out. 
because right now it's a little hard to see. It's harder to see on the camera than it is in person. Okay, we're coming back around here. I missed this one. Almost done. And then last is this row right here. It's really hard to see. I'm going to turn a little lower. There we go. And I think, I think I'll use the same one, so maybe just a little more paint. And I've done some where I put a dot at the bottom of the dot, but actually, I like it better this way. Okay, and then the last two micro dots. There we go. We'll give it a little spin. So pretty. And like I said, I see lots of imperfections when I look up close, but overall, it's perfect. Now let's turn the screen again to the top. Perfect. So, looks great. So, last step is to varnish it. And that we'll be able to enjoy our stone. Okay, so here we are. Stone is all dry. Um, you want to make sure that there's um, nothing that you want to fix before you glaze it. So I actually found like a little white spot at the bottom, so I um, painted that black. But otherwise it looked pretty good. So I'm going to take my flat brush. It's definitely seen better days, but it works. And then I'm going to try this ultra matte. Um, let's see what I think. I did one recently in the ultra gloss and it's pretty, it doesn't photograph super well when it's all glossy, but it's pretty in person. Okay, so there's the finished stone with the matte glaze, which I do like. I wrote my name on the back and the date with an acrylic pen. 
Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.